Hey ladies and gents, this is Linda Fate 777 and today I'm coming at you with a start to finish altered canvas for my design team project for Saw Crafters on Zibit. Um, I think this canvas, I mean there's a lot of pieces to it, but I think really it's going to be fairly easy to assemble. Okay, so I'm going to move my sign out of the way because we have got to get going. And who knows if this is going to be two parts or not. <laughs> it's all a surprise. Okay, so what I've got is a 7x14 canvas. 7, obviously 14 long, that I want to work with. Um, and it's going to be kind of a shabby chic kind of a little romance piece. You know me, I like to do romance and shabby chic. And um, I'm going to set this out of the way because the first things that we need to do is a little bit of prep work. I've done some, uh, you know, not a whole lot, but um, we still need some more to do. And what I've got here is some papers that I have picked out. I picked out, this is kind of a peachy pink polka dot paper from the Something Blue collection by Prima. And then I've got some um, real pretty script and a stripe paper from um, the Time Travelers collection by Prima. And we're just going to cover the front and the sides of the canvas. But the first thing I want to do is a little bit of uh, stenciling. Okay, so let me kind of get where I need to go. And I've pre-sewn, as you can see, pre-sewn the, um, the edges of my papers all ready to go so yeah let's get going on the stenciling so I've kind of marked some little areas here where I need to do stenciling I'm going to use this stencil um, from Saw Crafters it's the um, best friend stencil uh, but I love it because the you know a lot of the words in it and stuff like that just kind of you know a husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend can also be best friends so I kind of like that of this and then I think I'm going to use um, this kind of little um, you know coffee stain uh, stencil from Tim Holtz I kind of marked the area like I said I don't know if it's really going to get seen a whole lot but we'll see what happens and then I want to add some micro dots so I'm going to use my favorite um, this great big uh, Prima stencil that came out I think what a couple years ago um, actually it's by Donna Downey but it is Prima but I love these little micro dots I've seen a lot of other micro dots come out, but they're they're just they're too uniform. I don't know what it is. These are a little bit more random, and I love the size of them. Really, really very micro. Okay, and so then I'm going to use uh, modeling paste by Liquitex for my stenciling, and we're just going to get in here and get going. Okay, get my picture ready. And I want to turn my little viewfinder here so I can always make sure I am in um, view here. And then I've just got my little um, plastic tool. I've got plastic and metal ones, but the plastic ones are a little more flexible. Um, but I love the metal too, but it's just whatever I have handy. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit of stenciling going on over here. I'm going to do quite a bit, quite a large area, because I just don't know how what's going to come out. I'm going to do it a little bit more down. I think I'm just going to do that whole stencil. What do you think about that? or most of it anyway. Okay, lift that off. And we've got a beautiful stencil work going on here. You can see it. It's just a nice script stencil. And let me real quick like, don't want any of that to get on my paper. Okay. And then what I want to do is add some stenciling while I've got the stencil out. Let's put that to the side for a minute and then we're going to add some stencil kind of right over in this area on the bottom piece.
And these stencils from Saw Crafters are 6 by 6 stencils. It's very nice. She's got all different sizes. I tend to like to work with the smaller sizes better. But her script stencils are only in 6 by 6 And I believe she's got um, four of them. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit of script down in this lower corner. About here. And what I need to do is I'm going to have a little bit of stripe showing down here, so I want to make sure I get some stencil on that. Get that right in there. Okay, some of that stripe is going to get covered up, but I'm going to slide it up under the other one, but I want to just make sure I get a little bit of stenciling on it. Okay. All right, I've got my script on there. And let me step to the side here and kind of wet this stencil down. Doesn't get yucky. Easier to clean later. Okay. And wipe it off. I'm going to keep this stencil for a minute. I'm going to cover this up. I'm not really going to do any stenciling. I mean, that's going to wrap around the side a little bit, but my little end pieces, I'm not going to stencil that much. I want to dry these so I can do a little, some more stenciling and don't have to worry about smushing these. Modeling paste dries fairly quickly. Okay, now we've got this big piece out. I'm going to get some micro dots going on in here. down around in here. Yep, sorry about that. You thought I froze the film, didn't you? I was in slow motion. Just get a few little dots going on here. And of course I move it. Just a few little dots. I know I'm doing dots on polka dot, you know. Yeah, that's all right. I'm okay. <laughs> it's kind of a funny thing, but it'll show up. You know how I texture them a little bit. So that will show up. The dots will show up. And all I wanted was some dots in that one little area. Okay, and then I'm going to come back down over here, and I'm going to do that little... Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. My little coffee stain. I don't know how much is really going to show, and I'm going to do it backwards. You know, I'm going to do it on the back side. So I don't know how much is going to really show, or if it's just going to look like a blob underneath and not really look like that. I have no clue. 
but we are going to do it. And I'll even put those big dots in there. What the heck? Just wanted a little bit of different texture. Okay. There's it for stenciling, so let me wipe this stencil off. And then wipe my little palette knife off. Okay, and then let's dry this. And then we have to go on to spraying of our flowers and stuff. I don't know why I just don't spray the flowers and stuff ahead of time, but it's sometimes I just feel like, I don't mind doing the sewing or if there's any painting ahead of time, but I just feel like I've got to be able to show you something in the video, you know? Not just assembling. Although that might be the part you really want to see, because you know how to spray flowers, but... We might have a beginner that's never seen the sprays, a beginner uh, subscriber, a new subscriber, that's never seen the sprays or sprayed flowers, so... I want to show them. And thank you to all my new subbies that are coming on board. And a very special thank you to my longtime subbies. One of these days, I do intend to have another giveaway. I was wanting to reach 10,000 um, subscribers before I do it, but we still have a couple thousand to go. So, I don't know. I may give in before that, but I'd really like to do one at 10,000. So, if you are watching this video for the first time and you aren't a subscriber, hit that subscribe button because we reach the magic number, we get a giveaway. Okay, so we've got these set aside. I don't know why I'm grabbing that. Those are ready. Actually, I should just... Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of... Yeah. All right, changing my mind. One moment. So what I want to do is a little peekaboo. Um, and so I'm going to wet this. What I've done is I've sewn around it, and I've made a slit, and I've done my sewing, and then around the slit and back up. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of wet this paper in here a little bit, a little bit, and I'm just going to make a little tiny, tiny little, roll these edges back and make a little tiny peekaboo area. Which is mainly more for texture. Um, you're, you know, it's going to show the, the pink polka dot paper below it. But like I said, it's mostly just for texture. It's not um, really to... You're not going to really see the pink polka dot paper a whole lot, but I just want that um, curvature of the paper. All right. So I've just got a little spray bottle here, and I'm just going to wet that paper. And usually, the other part too, um, if I've got like this paper and it's single-sided, what I'll do is cut a strip of this same paper, sometimes opposite, sometimes I do a different strip, but most often I'll cut another strip of this same paper and I'll attach it on the back so that when it rolls forward, you see that paper on the back. Now what you want to be careful of, which, you know, I'm a little more, I watch for it a little bit more, is like, see how this is a script paper. Make sure that when you put your paper on the back, if it's a, a script, you put it upside down on the back so that when it curls forward, it's right side up. When you see that back side, it, it curls right side up. Do you know what I'm saying? If you've got a design or something, it doesn't really matter, but... Um, just a little um, tidbit for you. And then what I like to do is get like um, like a paintbrush or something maybe and kind of curl it a little bit. I kind of want a small curl. Here, this paintbrush is smaller. I kind of want a small curl. So basically I'm just going to kind of wrap that around, get my curl going, and then we're going to heat set it. There we go. 
when it's wet it manipulates better you want to be careful or you don't want to tear anything I actually kind of want it to curl more. I want to change my curl here. I want a more of a long curl versus a short curl. Yeah, see the difference? See how this is kind of a really long curl and this is a short? I want to go for that long curl, so I'm going to change that. Not very wet over there. Okay, I've got a longer curl. I think I like that better. Let me double check. I'm going to put some wings on my project. Some little Prima wings. So let me double check that that's what I want. I think I'm going to have it up that way. I think my wings are going to come off like that. My flowers will come in the center. I think that'll work. We'll make it work. All right, so now. I've got my curls kind of the way I want them, so now we're going to heat set these to stay in position. And I curl them from the front because they'll curl from the front. If you blow dry it this way, they tend to uncurl. Paper to get all nice and dry. Almost there. Okay, here we are. Like I said, it's mainly just for the texture and now we have our little curl of our paper okay now we've got that little part done so let's kind of glue actually no let's spray our flowers and wood pieces and then while those are drying just a bit we'll glue and then we'll go back in and dry again so I've got a bunch of wild orchid craft flowers you guys know how I like my wild orchid craft flowers and no, um, you aren't looking at it funny. It is kind of in the shape of a heart. I laid it that way on purpose because that's the way I'm going to have it on my canvas. And then my wings, see, will come right out in underneath my little heart shapes there. If I get it to work right. So. Let's spray our little flowers. I'm going to use a little biscotti like I showed in my last video. It's a Perlex powder. Let me grab it. A perfect pearls, I mean. Biscotti. And then I put three of these. This is like a little, not quite a two ounce, I think a one ounce bottle. Spray bottle. I put usually like, I want my color intense. So I'll put three little scoops of these. And look, I'll show you what I use for my scoops, it's perfect. <laughs> um, Letty had given me, um, and Barb had given me a bunch of these little um, spoons, so I have one hooked to some of my shimmer spray, and that's what I use for my scoop. So I scoop three of these little spoonfuls, and then I also got um, Jacquard Gum Arabic, and I do, it's a three to one ratio. So I do one scoop of this and three of the color. And this is just kind of a binder and helps it stick. Now, when I didn't have this, I didn't use, obviously didn't use it. And the shimmer still sticks to it. But I think this just lengthens 
the shimmer time, if you know what I'm saying. You know, it you know, it could last years, you know, five years versus a year type thing. Um, so, and there's other binders out there you can use. Other people have used like a, oh, I'm thinking some people have used hairspray, stuff like that. I don't know about, you know, the ins and outs of that, but that's what I do. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and give them all a spray. Give them a nice shimmer. And let me see if you can see it. There, can you see the shimmer on that? It's it's really nice, vibrant shimmer. And I like that biscotti because it doesn't... It's just almost like a pearl-type color. It doesn't really change the flowers all that much. Um, it kind of keeps them their own color, but still gives them a nice shimmer. I want a lot of shimmer. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside, and we're going to grab our wood pieces. Got some of these. I've got a nice assortment of wood pieces from Saw Crafter Store. We're going to be working with um, the wooden clock. And then I've got a wooden clock hand and a music note and some of her newer um, pieces, the cute little XO. I've got one chipboard piece, which is a, a brick wall, and I've just cut a little chunk off of it. And then a couple of her new sentiments, cherish this memory and a door. And then some of her new words, wood words, forever and love. And then I've got one of her wood keys. And then this is just from the um, Prima Stationery Desk um, collection noted, a wood word. So, okay. All right, so let's get a um, shimmer on my wood here. Okay, and I'm going to go with the old um, Tattered Angels Old Lace. Going to give us a little bit of a shimmer. I kind of want my wood to kind of stay the color they are. So we'll give that a little bit of shimmer. But I like this old lace because it gives it just a slight pink. Not much, but just a slight. And that's, you know, for this particular project, I like that. Um, because I've got a little bit of pink on my project. Okay. So let's set that aside for a minute or two, and we're going to go to work at to um, put our paper on our canvas. Set that behind me. So we got 23 minutes. Yeah, we'll go and do a two-parter. Nothing new, right? I always give you guys a two-parter. I think sometimes it's been a three, but okay. So let's get our paper on. I don't know why, but I for the, the short edges of the canvas, instead of making this long enough to roll over the edge, I cut strips. I don't know what my brain was thinking, but that's what we're going to go with. So I'm just going to actually, I don't want to mod podge them down. I'm just going to actually glue these down, normal glue. Probably, here, if I go this way, you'll be able to see it. I'm going to go up a minute. I'm going to be off view for just a minute. Okay. Let me see something here. Off you again for just a minute. Okay. And what I like to do, I found this tiny, tiny little um, brayer at a garage, so I love the um, size of it. I've got a normal brayer, but I like this little tiny one. And um, I'm just going to come along the edge and kind of smooth this on. OK, 
Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Make sure I got a lot of glue at the edges here. I could Mod Podge this on, but I just did not feel like getting the Mod Podge out. Glue on my fingers. All right. I know I'm off view for a minute. Got to be able to see those edges with such a long canvas piece. And I'm not going to touch the back at all. I'm not worried about that. This is just a piece for my collection, so I'm not um, worried about finishing off the back. Okay, now let's get this bottom piece on. Another little stripe here. Come on out my glue. There you go. Bottom piece is wrapped right over the edge. Go and butt it up to that side piece. That's what I want. I'll probably have to trim the edges a little bit on the back there a little bit, but I'm not worried about that right now. And we'll just brayer that little guy on there. Giving us just a little bit of a stripe, looking very nice. We'll get this top piece on. I'm going to figure out how much I want to get into this video for you. First videos aren't always the funnest when you put them in a two-parter because you know you're just gluing things and spraying things. So it's not always the most exciting. The second one's exciting because that's where you start laying down all your embellishments and stuff. I'm going to get this top piece on first. Put it right up to the end. I've already kind of got my folds on there, so that helps me a lot. Get it around to the side. Like I said, butted right up to the end. I know I'm off camera just a minute. I'll be back one moment, please. There we go. that on a little bit and then we'll get that bottom piece on. Yeah, and once I'm all done with this I'll trim that back side. I'll do that off camera though. You don't need to see me trimming. Okay, one last piece. Let's get our bottom piece on. What are we at? 29 minutes? Okay, and then what we might do is go ahead and put on um, my little ensemble over here. I'll probably take this to maybe 45 minutes. And then off camera, 
I will get the flowers and the wood pieces spray or um, dried, and then we'll come back on and assemble the rest. And this is part two. So, so I can move a little faster here in gluing. This piece on. Just a little bit of that stew or glue sticky fingers. I have stew glicky fingers. I do that a lot. I switch the letters of my first words. Okay, there we go. That's got to be trimmed right there. I'll get that all trimmed, like I said. Hold the back and bray it on there. Come to the back. Bring it on there. All right, so we have our little canvas, which is looking a little bit funky right now. Usually does, but it'll look pretty when we're done. All right, so let's move on. Yeah, let's move on and get my little ensemble done over here that I want to put on. Get my Sorry about that. Get my picture up again. And let me my hands cleaned up here. Got lots of glue globs, and I don't want that all over my ensemble. Okay. What I've got over here is a bunch of pieces that I have cut and um, sewn and distress the edges so that I can make a little um, I've got ensemble over here where my picture is going to go and I've got like a film strip and I've even sewed it this is from shoot I can't even remember a um, long time ago I got from a um, oh, scrapbook convention I've got some pieces of like pink paisley London Market collection, and I've got some pieces from like Something Blue collection. This one's also from Something Blue. And then I've got just like a tag because I like the color of it. It kind of went down with that paper I got. I love to find um, paper from Canvas Core and then a little die cut. I can't remember where that collection's from. Little hot air balloon and a little ticket from stationer's desk and then another piece from um, London Market Collection and I printed my picture husband's and I picture out on transparency and sewed it to that paper and you know then you can see the designs through the paper okay all right so let's get boogieing on putting that together and then we'll stop the video and come back for part two so let me see I think I can straddle the camera. I'm going to come down a little bit so it gives me some room to straddle the camera and bring my arms around. There we go. Okay, I want that to come off my paper a little bit. I'm still here. Just got to get my right picture up. Nope. That one. There we go. And then we're going to put the See which order we're going here. We're going to get our map down next. Far over we want it. And we're going to get a little bit of stripe going on in there. Going to be just little bits and pieces of each one shown. Map kind of up this way. 
And then we're going to get our little music strip here. That's going to come right about in here like that. So you put it together and then put it together. <laughs> Love to find. Let's see, this little piece is going to go right on top of the music note. I've got this great little metal piece here. Right on top. And the little Australian tag is going to come right over here. I call it an Australian tag because it looks like it says La Australia on it. So that's why I'm calling it that. A little bit of my stripe to show, I think. And I want my die cut kind of down in here. Up under, I gotta pull that little pocket up just a bit. There we go. Die cut can fit right up under there. There we are. That'll get fixed. I'm just trying to make sure my placement's right. Okay, let's get gluing. It's kind of where I want everything. Let's get glue in a little bit. I also want that to come up and under. Okay, I think what I'm going to do, do a little bit of hot glue under this. Because that's not going to get seen. just under this piece. It'll hold it nice. Okay, and then we're gonna go... Where'd my map go? My map's over here. Alright, we're gonna go for a little map. At least get this part done. Then we'll come back and assemble the rest. Make sure I had room for my piece that I want up there. Okay, I'm gonna go for a stripe. tripod here. Work around my camera versus the side. Okay, I want this to really pop up right over here. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and put my little this tag down first. And then we'll just not put glue on that one corner so we can put that tag or that metal piece under it. Come on, glue. Work for me, baby. There we go. It's always on camera, right? Glue doesn't want to work. Okay. And then I'm going to get my Loctite glue to put this little metal piece on. Loctite. Stick and seal. They now have it at a, they did have it at a Walmart and they took it away so I was having to get it at the hardware store but now I noticed they brought it back into Walmart again. Super excited about that because it's definitely a lot cheaper. 
It doesn't smell like E6000, so that's what I like about it. All right, let's get our metal piece right up under there. Very pretty. It'll add a touch of metal because we got metal in other spaces, so we want to bring our metal in there. Okay, let's get the die cut in at the bottom. Got a glue glob over here, sorry. Got a glue glob. Okay, die cut in at the bottom. Yep, I even sewed around my die cut. Do you believe it? I have to go real slow on that one. Let's get our die cut in there. A lot of layering going on. As you can see, see we've got a bunch of layering. Then we're going to get our love defined paper. on top over here. So you see a little bit of that, a little bit of everything. Okay, then we're going to get our picture in. Now as soon as I wipe the glue off of my Glue bottle. Okay, get a picture in. I want to touch it because I got glue on my hands. Ooh, that could have almost been a disaster. I don't want glue on my transparency. Disaster averted. up a little bit. over. There we go. Okay, and then we need to go ahead and get that on. I've got a Prima Claw can here. We want to get our little guy in there. this come right out underneath there. And we'll get this little guy on. It's going to cover that. Our little hot air balloon up in the corner. Our little today sticker. Not sticker, ticket. And let me look at something here real quick. Okay, and again to get that right up in here, 
a little ticket. And then, see, that's dry. Oh yeah, that's dry. So we have our little noted. We're going to put that right up under, right up under our ticket. Try not to have a glue glob because you guys know how I feel about my glue globs. And we've got this little resin piece, this little, we're going to put right down in here. So I want to make sure that this kind of sits right, almost like it's on top. Okay, there we go. We've got that little top part assembled. Now what we're, when I'm going to come back on part two and we're going to get this piece, um, all this stuff assembled here and then this stuff assembled down here. It shouldn't be too long of a video, but uh, thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Come on to part two. Bye.